many of us learn to first feel true dread and terror at a funeral home. The sights, sounds, smells, and tears wreak havoc on us. But what if something even more devious was existing behind the hallowed walls of an unsuspecting funeral home? Listen to our story to find out. What's that? You want to be scared? Come with me. You will experience tales of horror, ghosts, and death. It is not recommended for the weak at heart. Listen in the dark. It's more fun that way. This is Weekly Spooky. Hello, my friends. It's Wednesday, and you know what that means. It's time for a little spooky in your weekly. I'm your host and narrator, Henrik Kuto, and oh my... Oh me, it's September. Fall is approaching, and that means we are on the cusp of spooky season. Of course, over here, every day is spooky season. And I have a great story to help you get excited for fall weather, sweaters, cider, and fear. But before we get to that, I want to take a moment to say... Thank you so much for listening to the show. Make sure you're subscribed on your favorite podcasting app. And if you want to help us in a way that costs you absolutely nothing, simply go to your favorite podcasting app, whether it's Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, or one I don't even know about, and leave us a star rating. Help bring in some brand new spookies. And if you want even more help getting into the holiday spirit, why not go over to Facebook and type in Weekly Spookies Tomb of Terror. It's a Facebook group for all the spookies to share their favorite memes, scary stories, podcasts, and so much more. And if you want to take it one step further, we're now at 89 Patreon backers. So if you go to weeklyspooky.com and click on Patreon, for as little as $1 a month, you can get bonus episodes and so much more. And know you are helping us keep the spooky going and going and going. But now, my friends, there's a chill in the air. Fall is approaching quickly. And we have a date with a funeral home after these words from our sponsors. The Charnel House by Morgan Moore Hobart's funeral manor was an odd member of the community of cavalry. Every town was bound to have a place for people to have one more chance to see a loved one before their journey to the other side. But Hobart's always rubbed the cavalry citizens just a bit the wrong way. If you asked one of them, they would give you a different answer the gist of which coming down to the building and its owner, Mr. Hobart, just being weird. None of these thoughts were of importance to Benjamin Randall. The nine-year-old was part of a congregation paying final respects to Benjamin's great-grandfather. To him, the building was weird, but so was every other old building in town. His mind was occupied with trying not to die of boredom. Benjamin was never extremely close to his grandfather or many other members of his family, including his parents. To him, this was any other Saturday, save for his boredom. After two hours of being shuffled around between his family, Benjamin had had enough. Mom, can I go to the bathroom? He asks his mother after she sees off somebody who was an aunt of some kind. Yes, dear, go do what you need to do, she replies without giving Ben any real attention. Benjamin leaves the room his family was in and breathes a sigh of relief 
as he closes the door. The boy looked around the hallway and took note that it, too, was rather boring. Why do people think this place is strange? He asked himself. To him, it was just an old building that looked like it had never really been kept up on much. The building creaked any time movement was made. Dust and spider webs were caked all over the walls and ceilings. The decor looked like it came straight out of a movie set in the 1800s. This place isn't so terrible, and it isn't scary. It's just boring. Ben sighed again as he walked through the hallway and into the greeting room of the house. His eyes shifted to the front door. The thought of leaving Hobart's entering his mind quickly and exiting just as quickly. Mom and Dad would kill me. As Benjamin's eyes moved away from the front door, they found themselves quickly catching a moving shadow. Ben stopped as he processed the scene. For a very brief moment, he had seen something move, quite quickly, through a door by a bookcase. Everybody in Cavalry knew that Mr. Hobart lived here and that nobody really ever ventured out of the greeting room or the long hallway that contained all the rooms for visitors. Nothing was posted on the door or anywhere in the house that indicated certain areas were off-limits. Ben cocked his head before he walked up to the door. He looked up and down at it before taking a quick breath. The boy reached out with his hand and pushed on the door, swinging it wide open. As Ben stepped into the room, the floorboards creaked under him so shrilly that he thought the floor was about to break beneath him. A new sound passed through his ears then. It was the sound of feet quickly moving. Ben squinted to try and see what it was, but the lack of light made it difficult. What little he saw told him it wasn't an animal, but a person, a very small person. Benjamin squinted harder and could make out another door tucked away in the back corner. He moved towards it, making sure to not bump into anything. At the door, he grasped the knob and pulled it open to reveal another room, darker than the one he was in. Ben felt around the wall as he made his way in, eventually finding a light switch. The boy flicked it on and bathed the room in light, revealing it was a kitchen. A noise catches Ben's attention before he can fully take it all in. His head twists to a table in the middle of the kitchen, and his feet carry him there on instinct. He bends his knees down and looks under the table, coming face to face with a girl. Hi, Benjamin stammers out. The girl looked to be Benjamin's age. Her hair was reddish brown and curled at the bottom in thick clumps. Ben took special note of her eyes and skin. The eyes were flat brown, with only the slightest appearance of a shimmer. Her skin is what caught his attention the most, however. It looked like one flat color. Ben thought of how the ceramic dolls his grandmother had looked. He deemed it the closest thing he could compare the girl to. My name is Ben. Who are you? He asks the girl. She looks at him. Never blinking, only staring. Slowly, she crawls over to him. Startled, Ben moves backwards and stands up, the girl repeating his action. She was only a few inches shorter than he was, her clothing reminding him of what pilgrims wore. Anna, she says softly. That's a nice name, Ben comments and gives her a small smile. She didn't return it. What are you doing back here? Anna asks. I'm here with my family, kind of. My great-grandpa died, but uh, I wasn't close to him or anybody, really. I got bored and left. That's when I saw you, Benjamin explains. Your family bores you? Anna questions. No, I mean, I don't know. I just think this is all boring, and I guess... Because I'm not close to anybody in my family, I think doing anything with them is boring. 
Ben tries his best to get across his thoughts. In truth, he had a lot of complicated feelings towards his extended family and his parents. He never had a real chance to connect with the extended members of the Randall family, and at times it was as if he didn't even exist to his parents. In truth, Ben didn't have much of anybody he was close to. That's sad, Anna comments. Yeah, I... Uh, what about your family? Ben asks. Daddy is working right now, Anna explains. Mr. Hobart? Ben follows up. Mm-hmm. What about your mom? Ben questions. I don't have one, the girl responds. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, what about school? Friends? The boy prods more. I don't go to school. I don't have friends either. I stay here all the time, Anna answers. You never leave the house? Why? Ben asks. Daddy says I don't need to. This is getting boring. Want to see the rest of the house and play? Anna suddenly says. Ben looked at the girl. Something didn't seem quite right about her or her situation. What parent didn't let their kid go to school? He could accept that she didn't have friends since she was pretty weird, but not even letting her out of the house and probably not around visitors was really weird. Creepy even. Everything about this other part of the manor was creepy, and Ben wanted to run away from it. But that would mean going back to his boring old family. Ben weighed his options as he looked at the girl. Sure, he said, deciding he'd rather be a little creeped out than bored. Great, Anna replied with a beaming smile and joy in her voice, which Ben wasn't expecting. She grabbed his hand and ran off with Ben following along. Anna dragged him throughout the house. She showed off her room and all her toys, not to mention making him play with them. While he found it a little weird to be playing with so many toys and spending as much time as he was with a little girl, Ben had to admit he was having fun. More fun than he'd experienced in quite a while. The two made their way down the stairs and back to the kitchen. Thank you for playing with me, Benny. I had fun, Anna told him. I did too, Ben said with a small smile. Anna smiled back at him. What do you want to do now? Ben frowned at his new companion. I think I should probably get back to my family. I thought you said they always ignored you, Anna asked. I don't think I ever said that, but, I mean, yeah, they don't always give me a lot of attention, and I don't really feel that much of an attachment to them. They're still my family, though. Besides, I don't think I could spend the night in a place like this. No offense. It's okay, Anna said sadly. Before you go, though, there's one part of the house you haven't seen yet. What's that? Ben asked. The basement. That's where Daddy works. Are you sure it's okay for me to go down there? Why not? You are my friend, after all, she explained with a smile. Ben returned the smile and nodded his head in agreement. Anna took his hand and led him towards the basement door at the other end of the kitchen. She opened it, and the two made their way down the creaky stairs. The basement was lit by dim, fading lights that adorned the ceiling. It was a large area with multiple rooms. The stench of chemicals and decay lingered and were only partially subdued by a scant amount of plug-in air fresheners. Anna and Ben walked through the basement, her leading him hand in hand. The duo ended their journey at the end of the basement that was a single, large room. Seated at a desk was a heavy-set man. He finished whatever it was that had his attention, wiped the back of his hand across his brow, and turned around to face the two. "'Why, hello there,' he said. The man was old, at least in his early sixties. He had a small beard that was as white, if not whiter, than the hair on his head. Small spectacles rested on the bridge of his nose." To Ben, he looked like a person out of those old movies that the funeral manor reminded him of. A perfect fit. Daddy, this is Ben. He's my friend, Anna tells her father. Weird. They look nothing alike, 
Ben thought to himself. A friend, eh? How did you meet him? Her father asked. Upstairs in the kitchen. Oh, Benny, this is my daddy. You probably know him as Mr. Hobart, Anna explains. The two nodded each other. How did he get to the kitchen, my dear? Did you perhaps forget to lock the door again? Mr. Hobart asked. Anna shuffled her feet and looked down. I'm sorry, sir, Ben said. Mr. Hobart stood and walked over to the two children. He smiled at Ben. It's no problem, young man. I'm always happy to make new acquaintances. Any friend of my sweet Anna is a friend of mine. I hope she showed you a good time and you enjoyed being in my parlor. I definitely made sure he had fun. He was bored anyways by his family, Anna chimes in. Oh, is that so, Benjamin? Mr. Hobart questioned. Yeah, kind of. I'm not close to anybody in my family, really. I don't feel like I matter or belong with them. It's complicated, I guess, Ben attempted to explain. I see. Well, you're always welcome here, my young sir, Mr. Hobart tells him with a smile. You will come back, right? Anna asks Ben. Ben smiles at the girl. Sure. Yay! Anna throws herself at Ben for a hug, not expecting the sudden show of emotion. Ben was caught off guard and didn't catch Anna. She fell to the floor with a hard smack. I'm sorry, Ben said to Anna and then repeated to Mr. Hobart. It's okay, I'm all right, Anna responded as she stood up. Standing up and facing Ben, Anna smiled. Ben, however, was not. His face was contorting into an expression of shock and horror. The left side of Anna's face was gone, simply gone, caved in like a clay pot. There was no flesh. No bone, no blood, no nothing. It was like Ben was staring into a clay pot. Don't worry, young Benjamin. I can fix her. You wouldn't believe how often this has happened, Mr. Hobart told his guest. What? Ben started. Oh my, I suppose I should explain. Anna here is a homunculus. I could tell you what that means, but it would take a terribly long time. To make it a little simple, I created Anna. I never had a wife or a daughter or a son, and it got so lonely I used my expertise in bodies and my hobby of alchemy and magic to create Anna. I can't can't believe it, Ben said in shock. It's the truth, and the truth shall set you free, Anna exclaims. Very true, my daughter. The truth will set Benjamin here free as well, Mr. Hobart stated. Ben gulps as dread takes over his mind and heart. What do you mean? Young man, you must understand that I cannot just let you go. What would happen if you told your family or others in town about my little secret? Thinking about what they would say and do about what I do down here in my free time what I do to the bodies. If that were to get out, you understand, don't you? Besides, it sounds like I would be doing you a favor, freeing you of your mundane life and the family you appear to not be a part of. Instead, after some adjustments, you will be part of our family, or at the very least, a permanent house guest. Wouldn't you like that, Mayanna? To have a forever friend? I would, Daddy. Do you hear that, Benny? Hugh and I can be friends forever now. Anna grabbed Ben and held him in a tight hug. Mr. Hobart stared at the scene and smiled. A soft chuckle rumbled from his throat. Ben stood embraced by Anna, paralyzed by the revelation of who this girl was what this man did, and what he would do to him. Well, my friends, you know what they always say. Home is where the heart is. But 
it might also apply to many other body parts as well. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed that story as much as I did. I felt like there was no better way to start September, which by the way, is my birthday month, than with a story of a funeral home. There are very few things as simply, utterly scary as a funeral parlor. And speaking of fall, believe you me, we have some big plans coming up real soon for October. We always go all out in October. For those who are new to the program, in October, we do a show every Wednesday and a very special episode on Halloween Day. And this October, we'll have a brand new episode of Terrifying and True every Monday and a brand new episode of Monthly Spooky. We have your scary season completely covered, so make sure you're subscribed. And if you want to go one step beyond, go to weeklyspooky.com, click on Patreon, and help us for as little as $1 a month. You can get bonus content, exclusive shows, and our undying appreciation. We're at 89 Patreon backers, and I want to see us reach 100 this year, so please consider donating. You can even contribute your entire year's donations in one shot. That's only $12 if you're paying one buck a month. And speaking of Patreon, I want to say an extra special thank you to our Patreon podcast boosters, folks who pay just a little bit extra to hear their names on the show. And they are Christopher Sullivan, Brent McCullough, Gino Lyons, Steve King, Karen Wiemet, Jack Kerr, Jeff and George Hilton, Craig Cohen, and Kevin Fry. Thank you all so much. But for now, my friends, it's time for me to get back in the tomb and prepare you some serious scares for the next few months. So for myself, our executive producer, Rob Fields, our producer, Dan Wilder, and our composer, Ray Mattis, I will talk at you next time. Thank you for listening. Make sure to find your way back next week. But for now, you are safe. Trust me. 